Are you weary from the battle you're fighting? Does it seem like the storm just won't quit? Is there a mountain in front of you? The Tao says they'll never move. And you wonder, will God make a way? Well, tell me a time he's not been faithful. Tell me a morning his mercies weren't new. Tell me a moment he wasn't able to carry you through. Tell me a day he was less than almighty When he could not roll back the tide Child, when you look back, you're gonna find There was never a time So be strong in the Lord and remember to take hold faith and stand firm. Oh, you can be confident the Lord keeps his promises. If you would doubt it, just read through his word. Time, he's not been faithful. Tell me a morning his mercies weren't new. Tell me a moment he wasn't able to carry you through. Tell me a day he was less than almighty when he could not roll back the tide. Child, when you look back, you're going to find there was never a time. Oh, he can work miracles, do the impossible. If you don't believe it, just go ahead and try. Just go on and try. A time. He was been faithful. Tell me a morning his mercies weren't new. Tell me a moment when he wasn't able to carry you through. Tell me a day he was less than almighty. When he could not roll back the time, child, when you look back, you're gonna find there was never a day he was less than almighty. When he could not roll back the time, child, when you look back, you're gonna find there was never a time there was never a Maybe it is 
Right now you feel like your heart is in pieces Maybe it is You think you've walked every mile you can walk And you don't have the will to survive You have exhausted each ounce of your strength So why even try? Let me remind you Jesus is for you He's right there for whatever's wrong I'm here to tell you That He will not leave you If He ever abandons His own Even though you might not see it right now you're not in this alone He is the friend who would never abandon you That's who he is He That's who he is. His plan is greater than what you had planned, even though it's not clear to you yet. He's always worked everything for your good at times we forget. not in this alone Oh, I'm here to tell you that He will not leave you He never abandons His own Even though you might not see right now though you may not see it right now you're not in this alone no you're not in this alone for us, we all three are having breathing problems and throat problems, so if we start coughing or anything, you know these songs, take over, sing, we don't care, we just want you to enjoy the Holy Spirit uh, and just enjoy the service today, so, and I'll probably be the one that will mess up, so that's okay. <laughs> well, we are happy to have a band today, but we've never <laughs> practiced with them the first time. So when I mess up, I'm going to blame them. But I appreciate them. <laughs> We're also having memory problems today. There's a light in the window and the table is spread and 
splendor Someone standing by an open door I can't see a crystal river Oh, I must be near forever And I've never been this homesick before See the bright light shine It's just about home time And I can't see my father standing at the door This old world has been a wilderness Now I'm ready for deliverance Oh Lord, I've never been this homesick before I can't see the family gathered Faces, they're all familiar, but no one's old or feeble anymore. This old lonesome heart is crying, think I'll spread my wings for flying, and I've never been this homesick before. Well, see the bright light shine, it's just about home. My father standing at the door. The world has been a wilderness. Now I'm ready for deliverance. Never been this homesick before. See the bright light shine. It's just about home time. should have practiced with the band before. <laughs> when they're on one side and we're on another, it's hard to keep the time together. Cause there's a, I'm move my piano and I'll be glad to go over there. <laughs> God 
the God of the day is still God in the night. Yes, the God of the day is still God in the So I always look up, stand and look up. Don't never look back. Look up. Thank you, Chief. Praise the Lord. Let's give Jesus a big old hand. <laughs> Amen. I shall wear a robe and crown. <laughs> I know we're all dying, but we ain't dead yet. Amen. <laughs> 
Brother Brian, if you could uh, bring up, uh, I guess number one scripture would be uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 through and 17. You know, the Bible tells us that the Lord said that in this world you'll have trouble, but be a good cheer for I've overcome the world. And for us to have joy and for us to have a peace that passes all understanding, we have to overcome the world. We can't let it overcome us. Amen? And it don't matter if it's sick or, or what's going on with us. It don't matter if our finances ain't great. It don't matter what's going on. God is still God. And He's still on the throne. And He's coming back for His children. And who is His children? <laughs> let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Woo! I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God and the salvation. Woo! Let's start out now. We're going to be talking about And you know what I'm talking about. When you feel God down in your heart, you can feel the fire burning. And when you feel the fire burning, it don't take much to burn the flames. It don't take much to get you to shout sometimes. It don't take you much to want to go and help somebody that's doing something for the Lord or do something to give God glory. Amen? Amen. And you know what? You can feel the fire burning. I'm getting away from that podium. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel Brother Andy saying, get back over. <laughs> oh, they hooked me up now, brother. <laughs> I can run. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I want to talk to you a little bit. Can you hear me on that thing? I've got it kind of turned down. Is that good? All right. I want to talk to you a little bit before we get started on the scriptures. There's all kinds of scriptures in there. I, I went through and looked up, I don't know, 10, 12, 14. There's a lot of scriptures dealing with communion. There's a lot of scriptures dealing with a lot of things in the Bible. But the thing is, today we want to stand on the communion, on the foot washing, on the breaking of the bread, and on the sharing of the blood of Jesus uh, as his blood was shed for the remission of our sins. Amen? And so today, I want us to concentrate on that. But I want to ask each one of you, as we go into our communion services today, it's all about being right with God. And the way you get right with God is you just ask God into your heart. And if you're not, but if you have, then you ask Him to help you with this. He will cleanse you from all unrighteousness if you just ask Him. But the thing is, is drawing nigh to God. That's the reason it says as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. We should do this about every day. I try to all the time. And I like to always know that I have no unconfessed sin before me or around me because I don't want the Lord coming back as something to keep me out of heaven. And you say, well, preacher, you think one sin might keep you out of heaven? Well, I hope not, but it could. And I don't want to take any chances whatsoever. I want to be right, and I want to be ready. And I know that the way you get right is you accept Jesus Christ in your heart, and you believe on Him and what He done on that cross for you. And then He got up on that third and appointed morning, and he died, and when they died on that cross for you, he got up on that third appointed morning because his father raised him up. And because he got up, we shall get up also. If we're in the grave, or if we're here, we'll be changed in a moment in the twinkle of an eye. He called up and says, so shall we all be with him in the air. So shall we all be with the Lord. I'm getting excited about this. Okay, on the first scripture, let's start with this as it talks. All scripture, when he's talking to Second Timothy, that's all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine and for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. All right, when we go there, I want you to go into uh, number two would be 1 Samuel 25, 41. We're going to the old school. We're going to the Old Testament. On this time, we see where David has sent for Abigail. Samuel had done passed away and David has sent for his bride Abigail to be brought to him. And it says there that when they sent those guys to them, when we get there, yes, and she arose. But it says when they went there to get her, she done this. And she arose and bowed herself in her face to the earth. She humbled herself. Now think about this. And she said, uh, to, uh, to, and said, Behold, let thy handmaid be a servant to wash the feet 
of the service of my Lord. She humbled herself, and she was so happy and feeling good inside because they had come to get her, and she was going to be able to go and wed with David. King David. <laughs> okay, there's another scripture. Ephesians 5 and 26. These are some I just want to share, and then we'll get into the message or whatever God wants us to get into. Amen? I want to tell you, as we're reading these scriptures, if God puts it on your heart to come and pray, just come to the altar and pray. If you don't feel like you're where you need to be with God, pray. You can pray right where you're at. You don't have no need for a man to lead you, but the Holy Spirit will let you know. And if you don't feel like it's right, then it probably ain't. I read something the other day that made a lot of sense to me, and it was on Facebook of all places, and it said, if your faith is not strong enough to get you to church on Sunday, it's real doubtful that it'll get you to heaven. Now, when you think about that, that is very strong, and it's very right. Many people will put anything before God. Many people will do all kinds of stuff before they'll ever come to church, before they'll ever worship God, before they'll ever shout hallelujah, before they'll do the things that that's required of us, and, and especially when we come to do foot washing, communion, and do these things. Uh, as often as you do them, do them in remembrance of me. Uh, I remember him every day. What about you? Woo! All right. It says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. Uh, we take that as in we know the water don't wash away our sins, uh, but the water will humble us if we come to the foot washing and do it with our brothers and sisters as servants as we serve one another. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Now how do you stay that way? You stay under the blood. There's power in the blood, praise the Lord. Say, well, I'm not worthy. No, you're not. And ain't none of us worthy of what Jesus did, but we are worthy by that. We're made worthy by Him, by that righteousness that is within us because of what He done for us. Amen? All right, let's go to the fourth scripture I want to do. I'm going to do seven today, okay? So the fourth scripture will be John chapter 13, verses 2 through 17. God's Word is so good. And Jesus is so good. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Now we know how the Easter story goes. I love that Easter story. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he was come from God and went to God. He riseth from supper, and he laid aside his garments, that's his outer garment. And he took a towel, and he girded himself. Whew. After that, he poured water into a basin, and he began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with a towel, wherewith he was girded. Can't you see that in your mind? Then cometh he to Simon Peter. Peter was a fisherman. Peter was pretty rough. Peter was very opinionated sometimes. Him and Paul didn't get along at all at times. But they still loved each other. And they still kept preaching the gospel. Amen. They might not have stayed in the same circles all the time, but they were still, they still loved each other. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter says unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, I have a change of heart. Then not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Just wash me, Lord. <laughs> and he said, And you are clean. He says, And he says, He that is washed needeth not to save to wash his feet, but is clean every day. And you are clean, but not up. Speaking no doubt about Judas Iscariot, and maybe even me at one time or another. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, you are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet, and he had taken his garments, 
and have was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and you shall say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. The Scripture. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. Now that's about as plain as it can get, ain't it, brother? All right. Let's go on to uh, verse 5, Luke 22, 15 through 20. God is so good, children. I'm trying to do this pastor thing the best I can. You all know I'm an evangelist, but I'm trying my best to do it. It's hard to teach sometimes when you have to. But I can tell you this. And he said in Luke, he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. This is the ones we use in the Easter story. About that time when your people start crying and sobbing. And, and it's so long. He says, and he said unto them, Whew, For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And the kingdom of God is within you. And said, and he took bread, and he gave thanks and break it. And he gave it unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. Whew. Praise the Lord. Verse 6, 1 Corinthians. I'm going to put 1 Corinthians Chapter 11, verses 23 through 31. And then we're going to have church, haven't we? We're going to have real church. 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 23 through 31. I love that Oyster story. I know we're way behind on it, but I hope that we'll get to do it maybe this next year coming. If not, we need to do something. Amen? Kevin Roberts is probably going, shh. Right <laughs> brother Jason is probably going, shh. I don't know. We'll come up with something, brother. All right. So here we go. Chapter 23. Verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I have delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, take it, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is a new testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, now get this, for if we would judge ourselves, keep ourselves right in the sight of the Lord and do the best we can, we should not be judged. So therefore we accept the blood that was shed on that cross for the cleansing of our sins. And therefore we know if we ask God to forgive us, He will. He said He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. All we got to do is confess them before Him. 
All you got to do is go to the Lord and ask Him, and He will. You know, we always call it the wash day in the house of the Lord a lot of times. But I can tell you this, there should, wash day should be every day. Every day we should, when we get up, first thing I do is thank you for allowing me to open my eyes. Even if they're not open yet, and I've just come to the point that I'm awake and aware. And then next I start praying for people, don't you? And I pray for a good day. And I pray for my brothers and sisters. And I pray that he'll bless each one of them. And that he'll heal Austin's eyes. And, and that he'll, he'll heal Brittany. Woo, glory. And we pray for one another as the Bible says. And we pray that we will be healed. We pray that God will help each one of us. Because one day after a while, brother, we're going home. We won't have to worry about this anymore. Woo. I want to talk to you about being real with God. God don't really care about how much stuff you have. He really don't. He blesses us. He does. But he really don't care for that stuff. He knows we do, so he gives us stuff. He does. Thank the Lord. We ought to give him a big hand for stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because he does give us all kinds of good stuff. But you know, to know that, and to know that he loves us enough, how many of you love your children? Didn't you give them good stuff? Didn't you always try to help them in any way you could? That's God. One day after a while, children, all this stuff, and as you get older, you realize this a lot of times too, as parents that gave me things, it wasn't the things they gave me that really mattered. It was the love that they showed me in their heart that I carry on with me. So it is all about love. And it's all about caring for somebody and them really knowing that you care. <laughs> How much louder could he scream it when he laid down his life for you and he shed his life's blood, blood for the remission of our sins. His own body was broken for us. That's a God that loves you. That's a God that loves you more than you'll ever know. You know what showed me love when I was growing up is when mommy washed my clothes, when mommy would fix me something to eat, when mommy would tear my hide when I was mean. I know she loved me because she said, this will hurt me worse than it does you. And she'd wear me out. <laughs> and I believe it did because once I had to spank my child, I realized how, how bad it feels to have to spank them. Sometimes they got to have it. I don't know why I'm going on about this, but I ain't. To be real with God is one of the greatest things ever. It's let him have your heart totally. Let him know who you really are because he already does. He knows who you are. Ain't you glad nobody else does? I'm glad nobody knows everything about me. But the Lord knows everything about me and he loves me. Brother Andy, that's, that's love. Amen, brother. <laughs> Ain't it good to know that he knows everything you've ever felt? I like that. How did you get that to happen? Do that again, brother. I like that. When you just break out in song to God and give him, give him your praise and your glory. What about that? Give him all the praise and the honor and the glory. When you just break out and sometimes just want to thank him for all that he's done in your life. Uh, not everything's been perfect, but he's perfect. Amen? Ain't it better felt than told, sis? <laughs> when you want to shout and nobody else might not want to. <laughs> That's okay, I'd shout anyway. Glory! Hallelujah. Did anybody got to shout this morning? Did anybody feel like God has been better to them? 
than anybody else. Come on, brother, if you're going to get that thing going, get it. <laughs> Woo! Praise the Lord. I think he's trying to sing me down. <laughs> but when you're right with God, it feels good. When you got all your sin covered and you ain't hiding nothing, it feels even better. Now, you know what I'm talking about. Unconfessed sin, it'll take you to hell. Unconfessed sin will take your joy. It'll, take, it'll make you want to not be with your brothers and sisters. It'll make you not want to attend church. It'll make you not want to go around anybody that is real. It'll make you not want to go around Fred Baker. Because when you was around him, you felt convicted. I did every time I was around him. I don't know why, but I felt like I could do better. When I looked that man in the eye, I started melting in my heart, thinking I need to be a better man of God. Now, it was the Spirit in him, not him. So wouldn't it be nice if we was like that, when you walk in a place and they say, I don't know who you are, but would you come and pray for me? I can feel something. And, and, and wouldn't it be good to be able to go somewhere and they come and looking for you? Jesus didn't have to go into the city and say, I'm Jesus. They knew he was Jesus before he got there. They already knew he was coming. And they start trying to surround him. He had to go out into a solitary place before daylight to pray because he couldn't do nothing. Everybody was around him all the time. Wouldn't it be good to know that your heart, if you had something in there that people want to, and I believe you do. I believe we're here today because we love Jesus. And I believe if you're here and you've not made your profession of faith, that you need to. And I believe you need to do it now. Today's the day of salvation. It's a set to time, ain't it, brother? But I can tell you this. If you love the Lord, I know the Lord loves you. And I know that you missed some of those that's went on. But there's a reunion day coming. There is a homecoming. And it's real. And they're alive. And it's okay. And when we get there, it's going to be okay too. Amen? Sometimes we grieve here. But we, don't, we, we will not grieve. And we will not go on as though sorrow, as the Bible says, sorrow is those that have no hope. We sorrow because we miss them. But we don't sorrow because we don't have the hope of seeing them again. If they gave their life to Jesus, we shall see them again. And we shall be there and we shall all be together. And what a time we're going to have. What a time that shall be on that reunion day. Praise God. I can't wait to get there and see Nathaniel come through our run at about 40 mile an hour. I'll never forget. I preached so hard one time at church. I preached so hard that I, I just felt like I was going to pass out. I go back there, and Nathaniel looked at me and said, Preacher, you need to quit holding back. <laughs> you know, he was right. <laughs> Ain't it good to know each other and to love each other and have a family like we have? We do have a family, and we do love each other. And that's what I'm trying to take this whole service right now to let you all know. We are family, and we love each other. Brother Jamie, Sister Courtney, just to read an all of them. Hey, we hurt because you hurt, but I am happy knowing that James was ready to meet Jesus. And let me tell you, that man was as humble, and I tell you, I never heard him say nothing bad. Now, Jamie might. That was his boy. You know what I mean? <laughs> Some of my family could tell you that I say things that ain't always just right. You know what I mean? And I thank God that not everybody knows what I'm thinking all the time. Because sometimes I'm thinking, what in the world are they doing? You know? But the thing is, is God knows that and he loves you. He knows everything about us. And he still wants us and he still loves us. And that's the best thing ever. Amen. Y'all about ready to start washing feet? We're going to get to that in a minute. We'll break after a while. And everybody go outside. Some will have to go. I understand that. But I hope some can stay. And if you've been saved with the amazing grace of God, we practice open communion and foot washing. You don't have to be a member of this church to do it. But you need to be saved, I can tell you that. And if you're not saved, we can help you out with that if you want to pray with us right now. And we can fix that right up.
if the Spirit is drawing you and you want to come and give your life to Jesus, then that's how you do it. You say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and he died for my sins. All you got to do is accept him on his terms. I know that that blood that was shed on that cross was for the remission of my sin, and I know that if I know that and I believe that, that he got up on that third appointed morning, just like he said he would, and he did, and he's still making intercession for you and I on the right hand of the Father, and that's enough to shout about because this whole world's coming apart. Brother Randy May, you say it's going to hell in a handbasket. Well, I heard him get called out over that a couple of times too and stuff, but I can tell you this. It is. It is. Uh, there ain't nothing in this world you're going to want not too long from now because it's all going to burn up. It is. It's going to dissolve. It says the heavens will dissolve with a fervent heat and a loud noise. It'll just dissolve and go away. He said, behold, I'll make a new heaven and a new earth. But I can tell you this. One day after a while, we ain't going to worry about this no more. This old place here where we've suffered and all the things we've been through, there'll be no remembrance of it. All we'll know is how good heaven is, how great God is, and all those that are there. An old primitive Baptist one time told me, he said, son, said, I'll tell you three things you'll be surprised about. You'll be surprised who made it, who didn't, and that you did. And I always thought about that, you know? Because there's times in my life that I might not be where I need to be. Somebody make me mad or something's going on. And I'm always focusing on that rather than focusing on my Lord and my peace that he gives me that passes all understanding. Anybody else guilty of that sometimes? We all are, I'm sure. But to know the love of Christ in your heart and to know that you're truly saved because you've accepted him and what he done for you is worth more than anything in this world. More than any silver or gold or money or houses or cars. All that stuff is just stuff. He gives us stuff. But he gave us the ultimate. He gave us eternal life with him in heaven. And that is worth shouting on. Amen. Can I give the Lord a big hand right now? Can we give him a big old hand clap? Look over at your neighbor and say, I sure thank goodness for Jesus. Look over at your neighbor. Come on now, y'all ain't looking. I'm looking. I'm watching. Yeah. They are. Some of them are. Ain't it good to know Jesus for free pardon and remission of sin? Ain't it good to know that he went away to prepare a place for us? He said, if I go away to prepare a place for you, I'll return again. And receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Why did he say that? Because it's going to happen. When is he coming? I don't know, but he's coming soon. I can feel it in my bones, can't you? This old world can't keep going like this. The Lord ain't going to let it go on like this. They ain't no way. And I am sure in my heart that it's drawing nigh, even at the door. So look up for your redemption draw nigh. I know this has been a solemn you're not used to me being this way kind of servant. But sometimes we need to really take inventory of our lives. Sometimes we need to see where we're at with God. How are we treating people? How are they treating us? Pray for them. What are we doing in church? Do we want to do something in church? Then do it. If you want to see something done, come and tell me and let's start doing it. That still won't get you to heaven. What gets you to heaven is when your heart's right before the Lord. And only you know that. Only you know. Is everything good between you and the Lord? How about it, church? That's a question we need to all ask ourselves. And we will right now in a little bit. Now what we'll do is after this service here, we'll pray. We break for a little while, and they set the table, the Lord's Supper. When they set the table, and the bread, and the wine, or the, we call it the blood, but it's, uh, it's not wine, don't everybody get excited. It it's the fruit of the vine, which that's what wine comes from. Jesus' first miracle, he made wine, he turned water into wine. Some do use wine. We'll let you decide on that. 
But I can tell you this, the Lord loves you with all his heart. And you can take that to the bank knowing because he did what he did. He humbled himself and he washed his disciples' feet. His body was broken for every one of them and us. And his blood was shed for each one of us. That we can have eternal life. You can't get much better than that. And there ain't nobody nowhere that I know of can do anything for you close to that. He is truly the only one. And he is the Lord. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the first and the last. You know that there ain't going to be no more come through here like that. There'll never be another God like we have. We'll never have another Jesus like we got now because there won't be another. And there'll never be another time such as this right now that we're in. So I want you to make sure your heart is good with the Lord and everything, there's nothing between you and Him. All right? Then I would love to invite you to come back and take part in the foot washing and the Lord's Supper. I would love for you to come back. That means that you've been talking to the Lord and things are good. If you can't, you want to talk later, call me. But I can tell you this, it feels really good. It's real humbling when you start taking inventory of yourself. I think you're doing real good until you start really thinking about it. You ain't doing so good. But it sure makes you feel good to know that you can give it to him, that he'll take it, and he'll cover it in that blood, and everything will be all right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. How many in here has been saved by the amazing grace of God? All right. That's good. I'm going to put both hands up. I forgot. <laughs> How many have been saved by that amazing grace? How many can feel the Spirit of the Lord inside your heart right now? Woo! How many feel like shouting just a little bit because of how good God has been to them? And I can't tell, I don't, you don't have to shout to show that he has, but I can tell you this, here's a show on your face. If you love the Lord, everybody will know it. Didn't they a song like that? If you're happy and you know, clap your hands. <laughs> I'm not going to get to sing it. But I can tell you this. We ought to be the happiest people, and I believe we are. If we are focused on Jesus and not on our problems, if we're focused on the Lord and not stuff, okay? So let's get focused on the right thing. Let's see our church grow in the way that God would have it grow. And let's go where God wants us to go and do what God wants us to do. If we do that, everything will be all right. Don't do what you used to do, because you'll get the same result. And some of our results ain't great. I will tell you, old Kanye wasn't that great. Do what? Think about it. But new Kanye could be wonderful if we want it to be. Because I'll tell you why, is old Kanye's us. And we ain't that great right now. What? We could do a lot better, couldn't we? I got two on my side, the rest is getting wrong. Are you doing everything that the Lord is telling you to do? Have you been convicted any in your heart about what we should be doing as Christians and as a family? I hope so. Because that means you care. And that means you love the Lord. And that means you want to do things for Him and with us and the family. I love you. I better not chew around anymore. I'm going to get run off. So... My job is to try to get you as ready as I can for heaven. And I'm trying. You may get mad at me sometimes, but I'd rather have you mad at me and go to heaven than to love me and go to hell. You understand what I'm saying. It says there'll come a time when people will tickle you ears, and people will love it, and they'll heap to them all kinds of people. I'm not saying they're doing it down here or over there. I'm just saying it says it's going to happen. Because I can look at some of them and they're doing some good stuff. Let me tell you, do good things for the Lord. Let the Lord's love fill your heart and let you share that with others. People can't deny Jesus. They can try, but they can't. They know there's something about him. And if he's in you, they'll know there's something about you. Amen?
bless y'all to come get a song. Sorry it wasn't a big old shouting service. But it ain't over yet. <laughs>